Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns and welcome back to yet another edition of Sound Off Louisiana and this will probably be the last of the little one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, episodes that we have because the year 2020 is thankfully drawing to a close. Uh, this is December the 27th. I hope everyone has had a very Merry Christmas and that your new year will get off to a great start. Uh, and uh, Right before Christmas, we were provided with notification uh, that the subject of one of our one of our more recent features, specifically uh, Louisiana State Police Trooper Michael Lynn Satcher II, had resigned from Louisiana State Police, uh, and we got that notice, as I said, right before Christmas. Uh, but rather than having it land uh, with very little fanfare in publishing it right before Christmas, uh, we waited until after and, and uh, we're kind of squeezing it in between Christmas and New Year's. Now we're going to give you the link to the Michael Lynn Satcher uh, feature that we had done uh, with regard to Attorney General Jeff Landry providing the assurance that, the, that, that uh, Mr. Satcher's alleged actions would be prosecuted as felonies. Uh, when we were notified of uh, uh, former trooper Satcher's resignation, which took effect on uh, December the 18th of 2020, and we got confirmation of that fact uh, from uh, LSP officials. Um, it had stressed in there about Jeff Landry's office providing the assurance that they would be, uh, his alleged actions would be tried as felonies. Um, and the next court date is February the 25th, uh, and unless a satisfactory uh, terms uh, are set, uh, then there, there will be a, a trial date set thereafter from everything I've been told. I want to give a thank you to those fine folk who are fighting against these type domestic abuse situations. Uh, because I think their their service to all of us, we owe a tremendous debt of gratitude, and um, I just want to thank you for for uh, the materials that 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 we've been provided uh, in assisting us. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and give you uh, those bill of informations with regard to uh, the felony charges, because as you may remember, Mr. Russell with the Attorney General's office had informed us that an entry in the uh, Rapids Parish Clerk of Court system was not accurate uh, with regard to the whole matter being null prost. Um, and let me just say this, the alleged actions of former trooper Michael Lynn Satcher, they're, they're, they're absolutely inexcusable. They're, they're inexcusable. Okay, I don't, there's just no other word to say it. But let me just tell you what else is inexcusable. It's inexcusable that the former colonel of state police allowed this gentleman to literally drain all of the annual leave. The taxpayers looking at, this is over a year that goes by, okay? And I think all of these um, pilots are at six-figure salaries. So even if you're using the low end of that, that's $100,000 of taxpayer money flush right down the toilet, okay? Because I've got other examples of folks who they didn't wait around this long to take action. I could start naming them, I won't. But many of you know who to whom I refer, and I could give you the names of three right off the top of my head. But uh, as has been come to be found out that um, when you were some, so to speak, in the clique of the former brass at state police, this is the kind of thing that would happen. And I, I wanted to be noted, we have the footage beyond just the Jeff Landry uh, uh, assurance that it would be prosecuted as felonies. We're also going to give you the link for the LSP, the LSPC hearing, uh, wherein Chief of Staff Doug Kane readily admitted they hadn't done a damn, a darn thing with regard to an administrative proceeding. And I don't believe they would have done anything then. Perhaps they would under the new colonel. They certainly were not going to under the old colonel, Reeves. That's for darn sure. Um, but, and beyond that, 
And we're waiting for confirmation. We're waiting on a number of public records to be provided to us to confirm things. But we've been told that he had just recently gotten his fixed wing multi-engine certification. We'll wait because we're asking for everybody who got that. Uh, we've also made requests for uh, this business about hiring someone from outside of LSP uh, as the newest pilot. We have gotten a response on that, but I don't want to merge it into this feature because I'm going to let this one focus in on nothing but Michael Lynn Satcher. Uh, but it's safe to say that this opened up an entire plethora of alleged uh, deficiencies, safety issues, serious, serious problems at the air support unit of Louisiana State Police. Uh, and we are going to give you the link about um, this business that in order to be hired as a pilot you had to be a trooper. And I want to point out that the gentleman giving that those statements to the State Police Commission is a gentleman named Mark Morrison. He introduces himself. Now I'm just going to say for disclosure purposes he is the spouse of Faye Morrison. Many of you may not know who Faye Morrison is but she's the one who's going to handle any public records request. Well, I'm telling you, if some of the things, or many of the things, that have been alleged, and we've had two meetings with gentlemen, I'm talking about face-to-face -face meetings, uh, with gentlemen who are very well apprised, I'll put it that way, of the operations uh, within the Air Support Unit of State Police. And uh, Mr. Morrison will readily tell you on there that he's the one that kind of serves as the financial officer. And some of what we've been guided to doesn't paint a very flattering picture of Mr. Morrison. And it's a little disconcerting to me that I'm having to rely upon his wife to decide whether or not I'm going to get public records or not. One gentleman to whom, or one gentleman with whom we met said, you're, you're not going to get those records, well, we'll see about that, all right? Because all I know is this most recent colonel, and I'm going to take him at his word, has said he wants open transparency. Um, now, if you hear some geese in the background, I fed them all, the, the geese and the ducks. Sometimes they don't get the message when the bread is out, it's out. Um, so sorry if you heard that little gaggle of geese or ducks, if you could see them on the opposite side of this camera, they're swirling all around thinking it'd be another meal time. But at any rate, uh, we, we, we presented the first of an investigative series we're doing on the Louisiana State Police Air Support Unit, and I'm here to tell you, and I believe the gentleman with whom we met has incredible credibility. And even if a small fraction of what all we've been guided to is accurate, it's number one, inexcusable, it's number two, unsafe, and number three, it is a potential hazard to the life of anyone flying with LSP air support pilots. Now, I'm just going to say it that way, because some of the material we've been provided is shocking, all right? And we're going to gradually roll some of that out, but again, we have to wait on public records request. Most times when I make these requests, I'm only looking to substantiate what I pretty much already know. Uh, but like to be accurate in our reporting, so as we get those reports, we're certainly going to release them. We can go ahead and let you know now that Michael Lynn Satcher has resigned as a Louisiana State Police Trooper after having cost taxpayers a massive amount of money. I will also tell you, I'm not going to give the name, but there was another gentleman all right, who recently retired, resigned, whatever you want to say, from the Air Support Unit also over alleged domestic abuse. Now, I'm not giving the name because Apparently, the young lady may have been talked into not prosecuting. That certainly is not the case with Michael Lynn Satcher. And by the way, this revised Bill of Information is going to give you more details of what 
Mr. Satcher allegedly did uh, in confronting Ms. Chapman on the date of October the 12th of 2019. Um, and I, it's, it's just unbelievable the amount of waste that taxpayers end up having to pay. What's really frustrating about it is we had $600 million diverted away to this particular agency that was supposed to go for highways and bridge construction and repair. We could have had a new Mississippi River Bridge. And if you don't believe state police isn't flushing a lot of that money down the toilet, I'm here to tell you they are. And you can see it through examples such as this. That's to say nothing of the John Alario cronyism with regard to uh, the hiring practices. And all this falls under the Department of Public Safety. Um, so, I mean, there has been an ungodly amount of taxpayer waste by this agency um, and all for operating what is basically looks to be uh, a fraternity-like atmosphere that has resulted in numerous problematic actions and we had a former state police colonel who did not only did he do nothing but he stood by and in in, in many instances the allegations are he aided and abetted it and I think you're going to see some more coming on that. There, are, there is simply too much material of corruption within state police for any one media outlet to try to handle it. All right. Fortunately, I'm aware of something that's being worked on by another uh, party, uh, and I would expect once all of that material is gained, um, we'll probably get some enlightenment. And I'll let it go with that. Uh, but. And we have one public records request with regard to that, um, and I, well, if they if they deny it, this may be a time I'm going to make an exception and go ahead and look at procuring an, an attorney. And the state police has so many lawsuits now; it probably doesn't care about one more. Uh, but I will conclude by saying this: it's very early in the tenure of Lamar Davis. Um, but I do, I do think there are some positives taking place. Uh, I won't go into detail because I don't want to steal his thunder of some of the uh, moves that I'm told are going to be made in the very near future. Uh, again, I believe that to be from credible sources too. Uh, but I believe he ought to be the one to make those announcements, certainly not me and certainly not ahead of him doing it. But I am encouraged. Um, that this early in his tenure there seems to be some very positive developments but I want to also let let there be no mistake we are he has said he wants open transparency we're gonna find out if he meant it thank you so much I hope everyone's new year gets off to a great start once again this is Robert Burns saying we look forward to bringing you many more such sound off Louisiana yep sound off Louisiana episodes in the year 2021. Thank you once again.